If there's one thing I can't understand about chefs, it's that they have a bad habit of taking what should be an easy task and making it a trillion times more complicated and convoluted. One of many examples is pizza dough. I've seen recipes calling you to make the dough by hand, then put it in the fridge, or instead of sugar, use malted barley syrup. Oh, and be sure to use fancy imported flour from Italy. As if this pizza wasn't elitist enough. Oh, and uh, once you let the thing come together, now you must knead and knead and knead and knead and knead and knead. Thankfully, I came up with a pizza dough recipe that might require a bit of patience, but packs a punch when it comes to flavor and chewiness. Okay, our recipe begins the day before in the stand mixer with the hook attachment. Oh, no, don't worry about my five o'clock shadow. I'll take care of it later. Okay, to our stand mixer, let's add three and a half cups of bread flour. And yes, you have to use bread flour if you want your pizza to have that nice chewy texture. All right, next, let's add two and a half teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon of sugar. Two tablespoons of olive oil. And the most important ingredient of them all, half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. Yes, half a teaspoon is all you need. Don't add the whole packet, I'll explain why later. And let's add a cup and a half of filtered water. And unless you live in the greater New York area, I wouldn't be using tap water if I were you. Listen, depending on where you live, there's stuff in the water that might kill the yeast. Play it safe, go with filtered water. All right, mix it together until it forms a ball. All right, our luscious dough ball has formed. Let's turn off the mixer. Next, grab a huge mixing bowl. Let's drizzle in a little olive oil. Ooh, oh man, that sound, I hope we got it on camera. Swirl it around a bit. Our dough will be sticky, so play it safe. Coat your hand in flour. Oh, looks like I went finger painting at Pablo Escobar's house. Cover in saran wrap and let it proof overnight. Yes, that's a lot. Let me explain. Listen, despite what the double chin implies, I'm by no means a pizza expert. But I do know what makes a good and what makes a bad pizza. So in my opinion, keyword opinion. So Italians, Brooklyn hipsters, please stay out of my comment section. A, a good pizza owes its effort to more than just one thing. You know, you've gotta have good sauce, good cheese, the right amount of toppings, and the right style of bread. In my opinion, the best pizza is the one that's super chewy and super yeasty. And another thing, gluten development will also happen overnight, so there's no need to... You know, I've done this joke so many times, it's not even funny anymore, even in an ironic meta sense. So, like I said, let this rest for 24 hours. In the meantime, I'm going to get together with Mr. Gillette Razor and take care of this five o'clock shadow. Okay, it's the next day when we're ready to make our pizza. But first, let's make the tomato sauce for the pizza. Okay, to a two quart saucepan, let's add the contents of a 16 ounce can of tomato sauce. Next, fill that same can halfway up with water, swirl it around to get any excess sauce, and pour it to our pot. Okay, let's add our spices. A teaspoon and a half of salt. Half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. A teaspoon and a half of dried oregano. A teaspoon and a half of dried basil. One teaspoon of onion powder. And one teaspoon of granulated garlic. Mix it all in. All right, let's bring this to a boil over high heat. 
Okay, it comes to a boil. Whoa! Reduce the heat down to medium low and uh, reduce this by one half. Okay, it's been... Actually, I haven't been keeping count. But the important thing is our pizza sauce has reduced. Turn off the heat and transfer everything to a heat-proof bowl. Okay, our sauce is ready for our pizza. Speaking of which... Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for... CRJ's Unpopular Opinion. Whatever you do, please do not buy a pizza stone. If you want to purchase a piece of ceramic material that's only good at one thing, you're better off buying a flower pot. But without a pizza stone, we're not getting that nice crispy bottom. So what do we do? Grab yourself a nice 15 inch cast iron skillet instead. And even though this is more expensive than a pizza stone, you get more bang for your buck. I mean, did you know you can use it to cook food in? This has been CRJ's Unpopular Opinion. Brought to you by Matt Pat's Game Sari Traditional Indian Dress. Hey, it's just a sari. A game sari. Okay, to set this up, flip it up upside down, put it in a cold oven. Close it and heat it up to 500 degrees. Do you wrongfully blame Americans for putting pineapple on pizza? It was these guys, by the way. The number you're looking for is 260 degrees Celsius. And now it's time to roll out the pizza. And take a look. The yeast has inflated our dough with yeasty goodness and it's nice and stretchy, which means gluten development did its thing. So let's flour our work surface, work out our pizza dough. Now for cutting the dough. It depends how big, thick, or thin you like your pizzas, but if you're a newbie, let's just uh, cut these into thirds. Okay, let's form this into a little bowl. Okay, once our dough is into a little ball like this, we can then move on to forming the pizza shape. Now don't just simply take a rolling pin and flatten it like a Looney Tunes character. There's a specific art to this. You see, the great pizza shape is slightly concave. That's what's gonna give us the nice handle slash crust to the pizza. So here's how you form it. Using the round heel of your palm, Push down in the center, roll it out, squish it out, stretch this out. Now using your knuckles, let's stretch this out as far as it can go. If you need to spin the pizza, then <clears throat> so be it. Next, grab yourself a pizza peel. Link in the description uh, if you need one. Flour it generously. Place our pizza on top of here. And, uh, Let's do any last minute adjustments before we put this into the oven. And now we can construct our pizza. But the thing is, pizza chefs make it easier than it seems. There's a specific way to do it. So grab a nice full ladle of tomato sauce, pour it into the center of our pizza, spread it out. Don't spread it all the way around. Leave a ring of unsauced pizza dough around. About a half an inch or so. Finally, let's sprinkle on some low moisture mozzarella. And yes, I know certain fancy pizzas is made with fresh buffalo mozzarella, but, but uh, those are cooked in ovens that get as hot as 900 degrees. My oven goes as high as 550. So low moisture mozz, please. Also, you want good coverage, but don't completely blanket the thing in mozzarella. You still want to see the sauce. And now, some pepperoni. Oh, one more thing. Let's sprinkle everything with a little bit of Parmesan. And now it's ready for the oven. Next, place our pizza on top of our skillet. And let it cook for five minutes. And 
finally, transfer our pizza to a wooden clean board where it can cool. And, bellissimo! A pizza that doesn't require any hard work. And sure, this may not be the most professional looking pizza, but it's still way better than Subway's Brazil's sorry excuse for pizza. Suddenly I understand the meme. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. That got my ass hurts. I hope I never have to sit on the floor ever again for a video. Yeah.